There is no such thing as society. There are men, there are women, and there are families. I must tell the House that the Falkland Islands and its dependencies remain British territory. No act of Argentinian aggression can alter that simple fact. It is the government's objective to ensure that the islands are freed from occupation and return to British administration at the earliest possible date. Hello, 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 and welcome to this edition of The Jolly Heretic. Now, um, that was uh, my attempt at an impression of Mrs. Thatcher, and the reason that I thought that was germane was because today I would like to talk about, I think, uh, well, the issue of the Spurg again. And I think Mrs. Thatcher was a bit of a, an autistic. And what particularly interests me is why is it that there seems to be a dichotomy in the kind of political viewpoint that is attractive these days to people that are high on the spectrum? On the one hand, and I was asked about this in an interview the other night, uh, they seem to be attracted to the alt-right, but on the other hand, they seem to be attracted to libertarianism. And overtly, those are two very different things, because the alt-right is about the good of the group, uh, the good of the, the, the good of the, the the ethnic group or the social organization and the libertarian what that's about is in, individual liberty about freeing a person from the chains of the group as they see it about 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 freeing a person from government about limited government and simply letting people get on with their lives and take full responsibility for themselves rather than be chained up as they would see it into a group now, but these two um, sets of people seem to have a great deal in common and in particular what they seem to have in common is that they are high in, in basically masculinizing traits in 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 being masculinized so why is there a difference between the two well um first of all if we look at why it would be because i mean sort of stereotypically you do tend to, tend to find these spurgy types on the alt right why is it that the alt right would be attractive to people who are high in uh, in autism what autism is remember is that uh, we have a spectrum at one extreme you have a very, very high systematizing. You're obsessed with making sense of the world and, and systematizing, and that is a marker, a key marker of autism. And at the other extreme, you have empathy. That is that you are obsessed with getting on with people and other people's feelings and looking for evidence of um, uh, uh, external signals of internal states and whatever, and uh, empathy. Um, but you are system blind. And in general, those that are very, very high in systematizing, i.e. the people that are that are autistic, they are low in empathy, they are system blind. And those that are high in empathy, uh, they, sorry, they are low in empathy. And those that are high in empathy are system blind. They are, they are, you know, they, 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 they're not interested in systems and they don't understand, and they don't understand systems. You have these two extremes. In addition, people that are autistic are also highly sensitive to stimuli, they get easily overwhelmed by stimuli, so they're very sensitive to noise, they take in a great deal of information, and you could argue that this allows, this helps them to systematise and make sense of the world, because the more information you can take in, the more subtly you can, you can understand what's going on around you, and therefore the better you can make sense of the world. Now, in terms of understanding why these kinds of people might be attracted to what is now called the far right, the alt right, whatever you want to call it, um, one reason, I think, is simply that they, because they systematise, they question dogma. They, they question, um, if, you, if you assert something to be the case, then they will question that because they will want to understand the world accurately. Now, the current group that is in power is, of course, is, is leftism, is, is liberalism, and they have certain dogmas which are nothing to do with the empirical evidence. We all know what they are, um, which they assert to be true, and they are empirically not true. And so obviously a person who is uh, high in autism is going to question these and is going to say, well, hang on, that can't be right. That's not the case. And, and that they're going to find themselves persecuted and criticised and condemned for questioning these. And therefore they will, that for them, that will imply, well, that, that means that there must be something wrong with them. They must be incorrect. Or well, why would they condemn me and get angry with me and get upset with me? And so therefore they must be wrong. And therefore I'll oppose them. 
and I'll question them even more. And so you will question, if you are high in autism, you will question whatever dogmas you're presented with. We have a system that's based around counter-empirical dogmas, and therefore you're going to be attracted to anything that opposes that system, because you will see that system as bad. That system is trying to, as the enemy of truth, and what you're obsessed with is truth. Um, secondly, people who are high in autism are, of course, low in empathy. Now, it's been shown that, according to Jonathan Haidt, we have these five moral foundations that we all vary in. One of them is in-group loyalty, another one is um, authority, another one is disgust and sanctity, another one is uh, uh, harm avoidance, and another one is a desire for equality and fairness. Well, it's been shown that people that, broadly speaking, are right-wing, uh, they tend to be high in what's called the group binding values, that is to say group loyalty, authority and sanctity, and people that are left-wing, they are interested, they're very low in those, and they're very, very high uh, in the individualizing values, that is to be concerned with harm avoidance and to be concerned with um, equality or with with uh, with fairness. Now, the the, the leftist organisation that we have in power, that's to the extent that they're morally concerned with anything, that's what they seem to be concerned with. That's what they go on and on about. Oh, it's so important that everyone feels happy, that there's, that, 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 that there's no harm avoidance, that no one's upset, that everyone feels equal, that everyone feels loved and valued and all this. The, 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 the thing that they are, therefore, in that sense, focused on is empathy. Um, they are high uh, in, uh, in empathy. And indeed, that this there is a study that has shown that liberals are lower in systematizing than conservatives, and they are higher in empathy. And so, the, the, for that reason alone, the autistic is going to reject the liberal dominant system. The, the autistic is not interested in that. The autistic is more interested in systematizing and logic. He is low in empathy, and therefore he doesn't necessarily particularly understand the current left-wing system, and so he'll be attracted again to that which opposes it, i.e. the alt-right. Thirdly, uh, autistics, uh, they, they get easily overwhelmed, they are taking in all this information Information, they get easily overwhelmed, and so they like structure and order. This makes them attracted to things like, you know, the, the moral foundation of authority, um, the moral foundation of loyalty, uh, and the moral foundation of sanctity, because this gives them structure and order and certain things that are, that, that are the case and certain things that aren't the case, and a world that basically makes sense, a world that is not chaos, a world that is unchanging, and therefore they tend to hate change and they tend to be for that reason alone rather conservative because change is chaos and they hate chaos and they are e easily overwhelmed by chaos by contrast what the left go on and on about is chaos what they want is chaos what they constantly want is change they constantly want to question the way that we do things in the world they can't in order to in order to, they see the, the world as a world in progress in order to reach a sort of utopia where everything's fair and everyone's happy and and so on and that's that's anathema to the autistic the autistic doesn't like change he, he likes things to stay the same and this is uh, uh, it's conservatism and indeed going back in time to a time when things were even more clear and structured and ordered and there was clear authority and there was clear things that were holy and weren't holy in a sense that you and uh, th 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 there was beauty and order and uh, um, and you could rely on people you know, that's the thing about loyalty and so on, and so therefore they are going to hate what the what the left offers because what the left what what the conservative um, is is basically saying stereotypically is there are such fundamental moral truths. Um, these are an expression of the wisdom of the ages, um, and the wisdom of the ages is is structured into the nature of society, and therefore that shouldn't change, or if it should change, it should change only very slowly. What the liberal is saying is there are no moral truths, and society is a work in progress, and it's our moral duty to promote greater equality and well-being. Well, that means constant change and radical change, whereas the, whereas the conservative doctrine is, if there is change, it should be very, very slow, and, and really things shouldn't change at all. And that is going to be attractive to the autistic, because he hates change, because change equals disorder, and he hates disorder. And then finally, of course, the autistic, to some, ex uh, to some extent, could be regarded as high in disgust. Now, overall, it's been found that... Uh, uh, conservatives are higher in disgust sensitivity uh, than are liberals. Uh, liberals are higher in certain kinds of disgust sensitivity. They're high in moral disgust, which is why they can't bear being on the same platforms as people that don't agree with them, because they feel this sense of, oh, this, he, he has a different opinion from me. Oh, it's disgusting. Oh, I feel I'm unsafe. But in, in general, they are low in disgust um, in, with regard to sexual issues or disease or whatever. Um, uh, liber uh, where conservatives are high in disgust, and you would expect an autistic to be quite high in disgust because he's overstimulated, so he will feel 
all stimulation very strongly, um, including things that disgust him. And this will make him attracted to conservatism because, of course, the conservatism overall is, is low in disgust, where is, is, is high disgust sensitivity, whereas liberals are low in it. So for all of these um, uh, interrelated reasons, you would, uh, you would expect the, uh, the uh, autistic type to be associated with the alt-right. And anyone that's ever known anything about these kinds of people will find they are a noticeable presence on the alt-right because they're of the autism element. But there is another group of people that seem to be attracted, seemed of autistics, and they see, as far as I can see, and they seem to be attracted to something very different indeed, and that is libertarianism. Now, who are these libertarianism? Who are these libertarians? Why would why would autistics be attracted to libertarianism? Because I think you, you do get the sort of pub bore autistic that goes on and on and on about individual liberty, about how there should be no taxation, about how the government is basically an act of theft, the kind of Ayn Rand Tea Party sort of thing. And that seems to be attracted to, to some extent to the same sort of spurgy people. So why would they? It, it seems very different from the old right. So why would they be attracted to libertarianism? Well, there was a very interesting paper on this that was published about eight years ago in Plus One called Understanding Libertarian Morality. And it took a large web-based sample of almost 12,000 people self-identify as libertarians and compared them to people who self-identify as liberals and self-identify as conservatives. Um, they found the individual liberty is the guiding principle for these libertarians. So whereas normally you have these five moral foundations, there is perhaps a sixth moral foundation, and that sixth moral foundation is individual liberty and wanting to be left alone. And you can see now in the protests against a certain a certain pandemic that um, uh, you know th th there is a strong libertarian element to that. And I think there's also a strong autism element to that. The people that are high in autism will of course question whether the current pandemic is true whether the current pandemic is based around just just dogma they will be they will be skeptical of, where, of what the government is saying about the pandemic they will be they will consider that we should just let things take their course uh, rather than shut everything down and that, that would be consistent with low uh, low empathy they will despise the changes that are being brought about by the pandemic the locks that lockdowns and whatever and therefore they will oppose it on that on those grounds they will despise the disorder and to their lives that's being brought about by the pandemic and they will they will uh, they will uh, despise it on those grounds as well and they will see it much more rationally and systematically, and therefore not fear the consequences for other people. So you might expect them to be attracted to a libertarian idea, which is that we should just not interfere with anything and just let the pandemic take its course and, and not interfere with individual liberty, as we are strongly doing. Anyway, what was found in this study is that basically uh, people that are high in, libert in this libertarian uh, moral principle have a weak endorsement of all of the big five uh, uh, moral foundations that we discussed uh, that we that we discussed earlier they they are low in all of them. So whereas the conservative, he, he doesn't like the conservative, that's associated with uh, not liking change, with not particularly caring about inequality, with being high in conscientiousness, that is rule, con rule, rule following and uh, high impulse control and that sort of thing, and high in disgust. And the liberal is happy to have change. Uh, he is focused on harm avoidance and on equality, um, and he is low in disgust. The libertarian seems to mix the two sets of principles. Um, so the, the libertarian, for example, will conceive of himself as not particularly caring about taboos, being quite low in disgust. You know, they, they won't be disgusted by the idea of paying for body parts or something like that. They will just see that as a rational transaction and there's no reason to have a problem with it. They won't be disgusted by the idea of people engaging in kinky sex in their own homes or whatever it happens to be. They don't mind about such things. So they're low in disgust, um, whereas the conservatives high in disgust. So they like the liberal in terms of disgust. Um, they're like the liberal... Um, in terms of um, uh, a, you know, a, a belief in that the, 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 you know, loyalty, as far as they're concerned, why should they have bloody loyalty? It's to do with in, the individual. They're like the liberal in terms of authority. They don't care about authority. They want to be left alone. But they're like the conser they're like the conservative in the fact that they don't particularly care about inequality, and to, to a certain extent, they don't particularly care about fairness. It's it's just it, you know, or the, that's the one way in which they are more. The, like the conservative, but otherwise they, they're low in all of these moral foundations. And so what was found overall is that the, of all of the of, 
of, of all of the, the conservative, liberal, and libertarian. The libertarian is the lowest in harm avoidance. He's about the, he's the, the he's just about he's just about a little bit higher than the he's higher than the conservative in fairness. So he's slightly higher in fairness, but lower lower than the liberal. Um, and he's low uh, in all of the other the other issues. He's particularly very low in empathy and very high in systematizing. And this would be consistent with the idea that you know, this is a matter of um, again of autism and and by extension testosterone because it's been found that, that uh, autism is associated with testosterone with prenatal testosterone if you're high in that's why men are higher in autism traits than women if you're higher in, in testosterone then you're more you're more autistic you're more concerned with systematizing and you're less concerned with empathy um it, it's and, it, and this has been found in terms of physical markers of testosterone as well so testosterone seems to be the key issue and so what you find according um is that, that you know these people are going to lean towards autism but they are low in all of these traits that you would expect to be associated with they, they, they don't care they don't they, they they're not they're not they're not that opposed to change as long as the change is in the direction of individual liberty they are low in disgust they they don't they're, they're not they're not concerned about that they are low it, so it's it's a, it's a it's a sort of odd thing how do we square the circle that people that are high in these autism people that are high uh, in these uh, autism traits are attracted to a group oriented uh, uh, organization such as ethno nationalism but they're also attracted to something that is so individualistic such as libertarianism how, how, how can this possibly be the case well I think there are two possible answers so one could simply relate to neuroticism so some people that are high in autism are, are will, that will be associated with neuroticism in the sense that because you are high in autism your world is chaos and therefore you think you can easily feel uh, sort of anxious and, and, de and depressed and so on and this can result in um, periods of religious fervor, periods of, of religious fervor in which you become extremely religious and th uh, this allows your world to make sense, i.e. the person becomes so high in anxiety, so overwhelmed by anxious feelings that the body is could, could be damaged. When that happens, when you're pushed to this extreme, then there is a, there is a reaction against that. It, it triggers these calming feelings. Uh, and when that happens, um, you will also be so instinctive because you'll be so on edge that you will over you your um, cognitive biases will hit in and you will do things like over perceive agency which is a, a cognitive bias that we have and therefore you will hear a random voice as the voice of God or you will see God's face or whatever at this at this height of being on edge and when that happens then this will this will also be happen at the same time that these incredible feelings of joy and calm are triggered and therefore you will experience that as a religious experience and this will calm you down and everything will make sense once again and you will no longer be as anxious and therefore you will go through a phase of a phase of high religiosity um and so that could be a part of what's happening so if a person is high in autism autistic traits and high in neuroticism then they could be attracted to things at least in, in periods they could go through phases of fundamentalism um and there is a strong degree to which religiousness is associated with being right wing they cross over very very strongly and so they could go through phases of being attracted to uh, to groupish uh, organizations such as the alt right or whatever uh, due to higher levels of neuroticism that's one possibility um, another another uh, re related possibility is simply that people who are high in autistic traits reason and that there is a need that they that, that, that they they require absolute structure and absolute structure and order in the world cannot be given to them other than through some sort of conception of eternal values, of, of something eternal, of something religious or, or sort of semi-religious in a traditional sense. And that that's what the, the, uh, the alt-right uh, provides them with. And so therefore, in a kind of way, they get drawn into religiosity and into traditionalism and into the idea that... Uh, the, the, any sense of truth is is bound up in something eternal and something metaphysical and whatever, um, and and that's a consequence again of very high autism uh, requiring a, a great deal of a, a great deal of structure and order and, uh, and and that sort of thing because normally autism is negatively associated with religiousness because people that are uh, that are autistic are uh, low in empathy and there is evidence that it's empathy that causes you to believe in God. If you're high in empathy, then you're very very concerned with. Uh, 
external signals of internal states and the, and you overread this into the world itself and so you perceive in the world itself evidence of a mind behind the world and therefore you're religious the autistics see the world in a mechanical way and therefore they don't they don't feel that but these people these autistics that are religious are not religious because um, of, 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 of a high level of empathy quite the opposite they're religious because of a deep and profound need for structure and order in the world making absolute and total sense otherwise they get anxious um, and this is what it gives them now what we could have potentially with the libertarians is a variation on the nature of autism so one of the things that's found is that the problem with autism as a concept is that it is a, it's a sort of a checkbook it's, it's a checkbook, you know, a shopping list, a shopping list of traits. And if you get over a certain score on these the shopping list of traits, then you are diagnosed as autistic. Now, this is obviously a bit of a problem because you could be very, very, very high in, let's say, uh, easily being overstimulated, which is an autism trait. But you could be very low in systematizing. It's quite possible. Any of these things are these, these these are mixtures of traits. These are these are syndromes where different traits come together. And there's the autism archetype, which is that you are very high in systematizing, you are very low in empathy, you are easily overstimulated, you have obsessions and special interests because you're so fascinated by the nature of the world and whatever. Um, and then you get those who well. Perhaps they have uh, they are high in systematizing and they are low in empathy, but they don't really have a special interest. And so they don't tick all the boxes or you'll get those that will become diagnosed as autistic, even though they don't have a special interest. But their their level of, of, of uh, low empathy and, their, and their, their overstimulation is so extreme that it overwhelms the absence of other autistic traits and therefore they are diagnosed as autistic. This is the kind of thing that happens. And so the problem with the whole system is that you'll get people who have very difficult lives because let's say they're very, very open to stimuli, very, very easily overstimulated, but they don't have the other autism traits and therefore they don't get diagnosed as autistic and therefore they don't get the, the help or the social, whatever that, that, that they would require. Now, what you could have with libertarians is people who are very, 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 very high in systematizing. They're extremely high uh, in that one trait. And indeed, uh, the study that I mentioned earlier found that libertarians, out of conservatives and liberals and libertarians, uh, libertarians are the highest in systematizing and they are the lowest in empathy. So in that sense, they are the most autistic of, of all of them. But they could lack in the other traits. So it could be that the libertarians are this unique, they're, they're, they don't get easily overstimulated. They don't, they're, therefore they're not particularly high in disgust sensitivity and therefore they've no problem whatsoever with you know things that people would regard as sexually disgusting or whatever so so it, it could be that that's what you've got that you've got a sort of a subset of autism which is very 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 high um uh, in in uh, in in systematizing and just wanting to be left alone to, to deal with the world and very very low um, in these other groupish values which might potentially be attractive sometimes to people that are high in autism so i think that's what's going on and what you could see see this as with the, with the libertarian is really a sort of a fast life history strategy we've looked at this before uh, on this show that we're all on a spectrum between a fast life history strategy unstable ecology um you, you could be killed at any minute so you live fast and die young and you, you don't bond with people because you might never get a payback on that on being cooperative with them uh, as the society uh, reaches its carrying capacity um you invest all your energy in sex live fast die young pass news as quickly as possible and as the society reaches its carrying capacity um uh, then uh, and it gets harsher and more competitive then if you invest all your energy in sex and don't invest in the offspring the offspring could all just die and so you move energy away from sex and towards investing in the offspring um and therefore this selects in favor of bonding and being more agreeable and being more conscientious and being more group oriented so that you can help the offspring um, to optimally survive and so we move towards what's called a slow life history strategy now libertarians it seems to me are, it's fast life history strategy they they don't trust anybody they don't trust government they don't trust social organizations they just want to be left alone in this unstable ecology to get on with it so uh, you could argue this is this is a fast life history, this is a, a, a rare combination of a fast life history strategy plus very high systematizing which actually would would, would help you out of the slow life history strategy because then the environment is predictable um it, it's it's harsh but it's predictable 
and, and, and therefore systematizing would work better. So it's a sort of unique combination of traits which seems to have come about. Whereas those that are on the right, that would be more of a slow life history strategy trait in many ways, although it does attract psychopaths uh, it's been found the alt right because because they just like chaos they like chaos and there's a degree to which if you involve in the alt right in a liberal society you're a dissident and this this creates chaos and so they're attractive to that that is uh, and, and they just like being different and upsetting the status quo um, but otherwise, uh, I think that's what perhaps you have with libertarianism. You have this, this unusual combination of traits which can be adaptive to, to in, in certain circumstances where you're basically very high in sort of testosterone and, uh, and individualism uh, and you're, you're adapted to a, a sort of unstable ecology where you, where you, trust, where you trust nobody, uh, but you've got this systematizing. And I suppose that that, that could be adaptive in certain circumstances uh, to, be, to be a fast life history strategist systematizer. Um, that could help you to have all of the aggression needed to get to the top and and the systematic ability to work out how to get to the top. So there could be something um, adaptive about it, although you wouldn't ex you'd expect it to be a very minority pursuit because a society that had too many of these people that were libertarians, that were that were highly uncooperative, uh, 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 Sort of cunning people, really, because um, I wouldn't do very well because nobody would cooperate with it. So it's going to be it's going to be a minority pursuit, but you can see how there would be a niche for people like that. So I think that's how they manifest, and they have only certain of the autistic traits. Whereas those that are attracted to the alt right have, I, I like to have all of them, uh, at least in the current set of circumstances in which the liberals are in power. So I hope that makes sense of this apparent contradiction whereby people that are a bit autistic seem to be attracted concomitantly to the alt-right and fundamentalism, but also to libertarianism. Um, and um, I'm, I, I hope that's, uh, that's a bit of interest. And if it has, then please feel free to support the show, which you can do in the various ways uh, below, which you'll see there. I remember that we live stream here at The Jolly Heretic on Mondays and Thursdays at 7pm UK time, when you can send in offline super chats on Entropy, and I will research them and answer them. And remember to subscribe. It really helps if you do that, because YouTube are crushing this channel. So please subscribe. Please spread the word. Please tweet it out and Facebook it out and whatever. And I will see you soon. And goodbye!